Acts 4.13 says, And when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, and perceived that they were uneducated common men, they were astonished. And they had recognized that they had been with Jesus. Acts 4.13 This is talking about when the Sadducees come and they ask Peter and John, By whose name are you doing all these things? And if we look at Acts 4, um, 10 through 12, just the couple verses before, it says, um, Peter answers them and he says, Let it be known to all of you, to all the people of Israel, that by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead, by him this man is standing before you well. They had recently healed a crippled man. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders, which has become the cornerstone. And there is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among men by which we must be saved. When people ask us if we are a Christian or not, do we answer them correctly or do we kind of cower behind our beliefs? Do we stand boldly, as Peter and John did, in the power of the Holy Spirit and say, I am a Christian, all thanks to the Son of God, Jesus Christ, who died on the cross for my sins. I am a sinner. I believed on Him, and now I am born again, and I have received His Holy Spirit. Or when people ask, do we cower back, and are, do we think, oh, I hope we, I hope we don't come across too offensive. I hope we don't seem too judgmental. Do we start to ask these unnecessary and irrelevant questions in our head when people just ask, are you Christian? Or they may ask, why do you believe what you believe? And many self-proclaimed Christians who are not truly born again, they don't have an answer for that. Because they're more concerned about their reputation, they're more concerned about not hurting someone's feelings, that they cower back and they say, well, this is my truth, but um, you can believe whatever you want. And the reality is, truth is truth. Two, we know a universal truth. Two plus two is four. Okay? Better yet, we'll say four plus four is eight. Okay? If someone were to say four plus four is above um, six, well, yeah, that's partially true. But it's not the full truth. 4 plus 4 equals 8 is a universal truth. It's concrete. And likewise, so is um, when it comes to the one true God. There is only one God. There's only one God that created all things. To be God means to be the highest conceivable being. It's to be infinitely maximal. So from Him come all other things. Nothing can surpass God. Now, if we truly believe this, then we're going to be absolutely fine saying, yes, I am a Christian, and I do believe in the Son of God, and that Jesus rose again uh, on the third day after dying on the cross for my sins. And it takes Holy Ghost boldness to answer questions from unbelievers. You know, there's going to be questions that come up. Maybe it's, is homosexuality wrong? Or... Um, Am I allowed to get an abortion? What are your thoughts on that? Can I live with my girlfriend before marriage? You know, these are questions that are clearly in this book. It's easy to answer. But sometimes we just don't want to hurt their feelings. But the reality is, is true love cares more about the soul of a person than the feelings of a person. True love cares more about where that soul is going to end up standing before the judgment seat of Christ, whether it's going to go to heaven or hell, than it is about a temporary moment of a question that they're asking, um, hopefully seeking honest truth. Maybe they just want to get in an argument and they don't have anything else productive to do, but still, we stand our ground and stand on that answer because the scriptures are all we need. It says all we need to know. It's complete truth. It's the infallible word of God. And so we need to have Holy Ghost boldness, and I believe that this truly is a gift, and it's something that we should pray for. Um, it's something that I used to not have, um, 
I used to be just a people pleaser in high school and college and high school out of my class of 380 people close to 400 something like that I got class clown and then I went to college and in my whole business department I got um, the award of most the person who can most turn a negative into a positive so I'm just saying this because I want to show you that my character and emphasis um, people did see the light of Christ through me and they did ask me difficult questions but it wasn't until about midway through college that I really started to dive in deep past the surface base level of my faith and since then I can't believe I didn't do this sooner and I wish I would have but Lance Van Tyne back in the day was a people pleaser I just wanted to be the funny guy I want to be the most liked guy and um, you know it was fun I got to know a, a lot of people but at the end of the day it it didn't fill me you know at the end of the day I felt like I was lacking and and I was born again during this time but I was not diving into this book I was praying to the Lord here and there and you know I didn't make it my own um, until really the Lord had to bring me to my knees through heavy conviction and that conviction lasted um, about two years but through that process he has helped me to become more focused on him and to care less about what other people think and he can do the same for you and it starts with um, admitting that we're sinners in need of a savior and by that the blood of Christ covers us and then we need to pray for uh, Holy Ghost boldness I prayed that prayer nonstop for years and um, continue to pray it but I don't cower at what people think or what they have to say because at the end of the day um, I'm not going to be the one who's they're not going to be the one who's going to be judging me it's going to be the Lord Jesus Christ and I need to be more concerned about what he thinks um, especially as we get closer to the day than what um, a friend a family member whoever thinks because we need to know this word and the more we know this word the more we know God the more we know God the more bold we are because we know that we truly have a living relationship with the one and only true God and that his Holy Spirit lives inside of us and we don't need to cower or fear what man thinks or what they have to say what questions may come up about our faith because we are well equipped with the sword of God and that any demon in hell that tries to shake us from our foundation they will not be able to do it because we have God both in us and outside us and he's protecting us and as long as you're staying in the word the more you read of the word the more it sinks into your soul and the more it's readily able in the mind and you can quickly combat the enemy and quickly answer people's questions that they may have who are genuine seekers so may we just pray for Holy Ghost boldness may we not cower at man and may we trust in the Lord Jesus Christ Peter and John had the gift of boldness and they were uneducated men they didn't have degrees they didn't have PhDs and all this they were common men who had one thing and that was they loved the Lord Jesus Christ with all their heart soul and mind and the Sadducees had noticed this they recognized it and they were astonished and they wondered how these men had such boldness but they knew that they had truly been with Jesus and so may all people from the um, outside our environment acquaintances at the job whoever may they all see that we too have been with Jesus.